You know you're in trouble when you look in your rearview mirror and see bright lights. But what if it turned out that that bust was a big mistake? For some unfortunate people stopped by police, false charges and messed up investigations led to huge payouts paid for by taxpayers. Police mistakes have cost a shocking amount of money, from property damage to years lost in prison. This is the story of people who got in trouble with the police and then made money from the most expensive mistakes the police have ever made. Get ready for a wild ride through high-speed chases that go wrong, raids on the wrong house and good times that turn into years wasted in jail. How much does it cost? Hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. But no amount of money can make up for the wrongs done by the legal system. Next, on this special episode of Busted by Cops, we'll show you the police mistakes that cost the most money. 1. In 2022, New York City paid $121 million to settle lawsuits involving police misconduct. This was the most money the city has paid in the last five years to settle police misconduct cases. In 2021, these kinds of agreements cost the city $87 million. Part of the reason for the higher payouts is that some people have been wrongfully convicted. For example, two men who were wrongly accused of killing Malcolm X were found to be innocent. After the protests in 2020 that were sparked by the death of George Floyd, there were also many claims that the cops had done something wrong. The large amounts paid to settle police abuse claims show that the NYPD has widespread accountability problems that must be fixed through reforms and better oversight. But city leaders say that the settlements are just a tiny part of what police do daily. People who want to change the way police work say that the money would be better spent on investing in communities instead of paying for claims that come from bad behavior by police. The NYPD said they often work with the NYC Law Department when police acts lead to lawsuits. They say this has helped reduce the number of cases and the amount the department has had to pay. The Law Department and Comptroller decide on settlement choices and amounts. Still, the NYPD says they look at information from lawsuits to improve officer performance, training, or policies when it makes sense. 2. City of Warren, former officer sued for $50 million in police brutality case by 19-year-old victim. Two weeks after a police officer was seen on video beating 19-year-old carjacking suspect Jaquan Smith, a lawsuit was filed against the city of Warren, the officer who beat Smith, and other officers involved. The case is asking for $50 million in damages. Smith had lawyers from Feger Law file the case on his behalf. One of Smith's lawyers, James Harrington, said that the officer told Smith, hurry up and take the picture, you little And Smith said, I ain't no. The 30-page lawsuit says that Smith's civil rights were violated and that the police used too much force. Smith's aunt, Tanisha Banks, was glad he was okay after what happened. Smith's aunt, Tanisha Banks, said that the first thing she thought when she saw what happened was whether or not Smith had lived through the attack. Bill Dwyer, the head of the Warren Police Department, said how quickly the lawsuit was filed. Right away, they file a $50 million case. I mean, why do they need to do that so quickly? Smith's lawyer, James Harrington, said, I wish I could have brought this lawsuit within minutes of this happening. I wish I had been able to file earlier. We did it as quickly as we could, though. Arguing the other officers seen in the video were... There are different stories about whether or not Smith was hurt. Dwyer said that Smith went to the hospital and was checked out and found to have no injuries. But Harrington said that Smith still has headaches, dizziness, and feeling sick, all of which are signs of a traumatic brain injury. Another question is whether or not the other two cops at the scene did anything to stop the fight. Harrington says that the other cops knew what was going on and should also be held accountable. But Dwyer said the other officers weren't there when the incident started and only stepped in when the now-fired cop hit Smith's head on the ground. Dwyer says the cops told their supervisor right away about what happened. In any case, the police officer who hit Smith has been charged with a misdemeanor attack and has been accused of using too much force in the past. Harrington said that the officer had been sued before, but the case was either settled or thrown out because the officer had qualified immunity. 
The case involved two different people who were hurt in the same event. Aurora agrees to pay $15 million to Elijah McLean's parents to settle the lawsuit over the 2019 death. The parents of Elijah McLean filed a lawsuit against the city of Aurora, Colorado. The city has decided to pay $15 million to end the case. Stop! McLean, a black guy who was 23 years old, died in 2019 after Aurora police officers approached him, put him in a neck hold, and gave him ketamine. In the case, it was said that the police maltreated McLean because of his race and used too much force, which was like torture. Shanine McLean, his mother, said that the deal gives some sense of responsibility, but that no money can take away the pain of losing her son. McLean played the fiddle and worked as a massage therapist for cats at an animal shelter. After George Floyd was killed, his death got a lot of attention. At the same time, calls for racial justice and police change grew. At first, local prosecutors didn't charge the cops because the autopsy results weren't precise. However, a state probe led to the officers and paramedics being accused by a grand jury in 2021. The big payment shows that the city knew it did something wrong, but Shanine McLean said it couldn't make up for the pain Elijah's death caused. The case has caused the Aurora Police Department to make many significant changes. 4. Camden County has agreed to pay Xavier Ingram $10 million after an encounter he had with police over eight years ago left him paralyzed. Ingram filed a lawsuit accusing three Camden County police officers of using excessive and unnecessary force against him, violating his constitutional rights against unreasonable search and seizure. The suit also alleged that one officer failed to provide required medical care or intervene. Named as defendants were Camden County, the Camden County Police Department, former Assistant Chief Orlando Cuevas, former Chief John Scott Thompson, and the three officers involved, Jeremy Merck, Antonio Janetta, and Nicholas Marchiafava. According to reports, Ingram's lawsuit contends the officer's actions left him paralyzed following the 2014 incident. The $10 million settlement aims to compensate Ingram for his injuries, suffered at the hands of law enforcement. Xavier Ingram was in a challenging position when he was caught outside a liquor store in Camden County two years ago. In a scary situation with the cops used force by putting their knees on his neck, even though he was in pain and saying respondent, I can't breathe, his legs felt numb. The police tried to get him to stand up. Now Camden County has decided to pay Ingram a significant sum of $10 million to end his lawsuit about too much force. The lawyers for Ingram say that this deal is one of the biggest in New Jersey and one of the biggest in the country. They say that Ingram needs a lot of money and that every dollar is essential. He needs care all the time, around the clock, which family members can help with sometimes, but not all the time. A Camden County representative says they strongly disagree with this choice and that it was made because of the insurance company's business needs, which forced the county's hand. The spokesman also says that they don't think it's the right thing to do. It's important to know that the Camden City Police Department shut down in 2013 and was replaced by the Camden County Police Department. The case between James Ingram and the Camden County cops is finally over after eight long years of back and forth lawsuits. This year, a trial finished with a jury that couldn't agree on whether or not the officers were to blame. The judge asked the deputy judge to step in and see if a deal could be made. 5. The family of a dead exoneree wins a $8 million settlement from the Baltimore police officers. Baltimore's Board of Estimates agreed to pay $8 million to the family of a man wrongly convicted of murder in 1999 and spent 17 years in jail before being set free. Malcolm J. Bryant got out of jail in 2016 and died in 2017 less than a year later. Amelia Green and Anisha Queen, two of the family's lawyers, Mr. Bryant always said he was innocent, even though he was wrongfully locked up for 17 years. No amount can make up for all that Mr. Bryant and his family lost during those years, but this settlement is more proof of Mr. Bryant's indisputable innocence and that his wrong conviction was caused by bad behavior on the part of the Baltimore Police Department. 
the Board of Estimates voted unanimously to accept the settlement. This ended a federal lawsuit that Bryant's estate had made against the Baltimore Police Department, murder officer William Ritz, and forensic analyst Barry Verger. Bill Henry, who runs the city, said that the city's law department had told him about the case. I know that some of the facts in this case are in dispute, but I don't think anyone disagrees that this was a tragic situation, Henry said. I just wanted to offer my condolences to the plaintiff's family. Tony Bullock was only 16 and was cut to death on November 20, 1998. Bryant was 23 years old when police in Baltimore charged him with her murder. In 1999, Bryant was found guilty of first-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison. The lawsuit said that early on in the investigation, Baltimore police focused on Bryant and ignored evidence that led to another suspect. The case noted that Ritz helped an eyewitness pick Bryant out of a group of photos, even though her description of the attacker didn't match Bryant's clothes or looks. According to the lawsuit, investigators also took fingernail clippings from Bullock's body to test them. However, no DNA testing was done, even though blood was found on the fingernails. The complaint says that Verger said that the fingernails were entirely eaten when he checked for blood and that no more tests could be done. According to the claim, that wasn't true. Later, DNA testing of the clippings was used to clear Bryant of the murder charge. These enormous payouts for police wrongdoing show that responsibility and oversight are broken in law enforcement agencies. Financial payments can help victims in some ways, but for real change to happen, the community needs to trust the police again. This can be done through better training, more openness, and leadership committed to fair policing. Until significant changes are made, communities will keep paying millions to settle claims against officers who break people's rights and make the public less safe. True justice means making up for mistakes and trying to stop them from happening.